PC gaming. These days, it's a cavernous culture of geekdom incarnate, awash with in-depth frame rate comparisons and hefty graphics cards. But it wasn't always like this, not for everyone. For many children growing up in the 90s, their entire PC game library could be found within a little folder hidden just a few clicks away from the Windows Start menu, both Windows 95 through 98, to be more specific. So join me today as we delve into and uncover the bizarre secrets and nostalgic legacies of classic Windows games. Winter 1998. You're cold as hell, your dad's refusing to put the heating on, and the family PC is free for use. What do you do? The answer is quite obviously games, but where to begin? Oh, I see where that little mouse cursor is heading. You fancy your chances at beating your sister's high score on Space Cadet Pinball? Brave move, kid. Brave move. <laughs> Clean, yet flashy. Minimalist, yet perfectly plucky in all the right places. Few free modern games seem to avoid detachment from the memory of pop culture quite like Space Cadet Pinball does. The controls are simple enough, even a child could play it, and trust me, many did. High scores also remained, cemented in place, tempting numerical peaks for your fellow PC users to surmount and usurp. But what if I said everything you thought you knew about Space Cadet Pinball was actually a lie? What if I said you've likely never played the full game before? In truth, what you and I played was little more than a demo. A single level and table, taken from a much larger, much more complete pinball experience. This full game, titled Full Tilt Pinball, also released in 1995, crafted by none other than the same individuals who brought us The Sims, containing three full, intricately detailed pinball tables, and a whole league of ranks to solidify player progression and skill. It's still easy to see why the smaller, prepackaged demo found within Windows 95 through 98 made such an impact on the gaming youth of the time. A single table, sure, but strong enough on its own to hold attention without pulling any punches. Feeling a little bored? Or perhaps you're instead awaiting a death sentence atop some minimalistic 90s prison? Well, in either case, you're likely playing a game or two of Solitaire. And who could blame you? Sure, on the surface, it's quite a dull affair. A glorified tidying experience adored by compulsive individuals. But dig a little deeper, stack enough cards, and you'll quickly catch Solitaire Fever. Programmed way back in the scorching summer of 1988 by a talented programmer and Microsoft intern of the time, Wes Cherry, Solitaire's primary goal was to familiarise users with navigating the Windows OS. Mouse cursor refinement, drag and drop perfection, it's all there. Even more strangely, the cards themselves were designed by Macintosh pioneer Susan Kerr. Solitaire is, at its core, a therapeutic experience. Soothing, inoffensive meditation for the mind, and mindless work for idle fingers. West Cherry even intended the original game to include a boss mode, a quick cheat button of sorts that had instantly switched the Solitaire window for one of a fake spreadsheet. Though Microsoft were understandably not very happy with this idea, and thus decided to brush it aside before release. Still, if mindlessly organising cards for hours isn't quite doing it for you, why not open up Spider Solitaire instead? This is, for all intents and purposes, the evil twin of the prestigious Solitaire family. Just be warned, there's a whole extra deck involved, and it's as tough as nails. Pinball's all fine and good, but what if you're looking for something a little more mentally stimulating? Something your mum could play, perhaps? Well, I've got just the thing, and it's as bare bones an experience as they come. Welcome to Minesweeper. Now, I know what you're thinking. It's been over two decades since you last played Minesweeper, and you're still not exactly sure what those little numbers mean. Don't worry, because I'm here to help. You see, Minesweeper is, for the uninitiated, battleships on cocaine, and a literal minefield of possibly explosive tiles. If anything, it's the first true PC-exclusive Souls-like experience, the git good of its time. Created primarily by Kurt Johnson for IBM's OS2, and originally titled Flowerfield, the aim of the game is simple enough. You're presented with a grid of plain grey tiles, and you're free to click on whichever you'd like. But be warned, because there could be a mine hiding out beneath any of those spaces. So guessing isn't likely to help you win, since your odds of successfully discovering a safe tile are usually around 50%. How then do you win a game of Minesweeper? Remember those numbers that we talked about? They're actually quite a bit more useful than expected. Each number tells you exactly how many mines are touching the adjacent tile. Ah, now it all makes sense. Thus, after making an educated guess, you can flag the tiles where you believe a few mines might be hiding, a feature intended to avoid accidental explosions. 
Once you've done this, you're into the territory of skillful deduction and pattern prediction. Fun, fast-paced, and surprisingly tense. Few other basic games of the time flow quite as well as Minesweeper does, and even fewer compared to its addictive, just one more go, gameplay loop. Though it's worth keeping in mind that Minesweeper is actually little more than a clone of an earlier game. That game? Well, we're not quite sure, actually since Kurt Johnson said he doesn't remember where the inspiration came from in the first place. With that said, though Kurt claims otherwise, the similarities between Minesweeper and the earlier Mind Out for the ZX Spectrum are hard to miss. And there you have it, a journey down nostalgia lane, and a quick swim through an ocean of legendary Windows games. Sure, there's a few titles I didn't mention, Backgammon, Free Cell, Golf, but we need little more than a good old-fashioned game of Space Pinball to get us by, and few other free games of the time possess such instant user recognition. So the next time you find your fingers fidgeting, why not emulate a copy of Windows 98? Organise a few cards, work a few flippers, and say a fond, if nervous, hello to the virtual minefields of old. I've been Forgotten Legends, and until next time, take care.